those out. Yep. Of course. So it's this whole patched area right here. Um, as I've said, it, it's about 55,000 square feet. Regarding the 21E, um, do you have a copy of that with you? I don't. Okay, would you make sure that uh, Mrs. Grassy gets a copy of that, please? Okay. The area where there was contamination found, could you again point that out? Yep, so our AUL area right here. Is that going to be part of the graveled area? There's a small section where gravel is over it, uh, this triangular piece, but we we don't have any um, proposed stormwater appurtenances there at the time. Uh, question, Mr. Aguiar, if there is contamination in an area that's going to be uh, left initially gravel, does there have to be any soil removal and replacement? It depends what the AUL says. <clears throat> so if we can get a copy of that, that would be great. Okay. Because there are gonna be restrictions and limitations embedded in Okay. Of course. Yeah, of course. I'll send it to everyone. Yes, uh, go ahead, Mr. Aguiar. So, uh, James Aguiar, Building Commissioner. So, I would just like the record to show in the public hearing that I am strongly recommending that the current stormwater infrastructure which be scoped and cambered so that we can find out the current condition as to whether or not it is uh, cracked, fissured, broken, full of sediment, et cetera, et cetera. And I know you did allude to the fact that you're willing to do that. Yes, we'll definitely have that arranged. I'm reading the draft minutes for that site visit. Um, about the uh, rain gardens, 21E study. Uh, rain pipe. Also, um, does that plan show where the gas line is? Because that wasn't identified, and that's something we asked that that be identified, the natural gas line. Yeah, so all I know at this time is that it, it comes out of the building this corner. Um, don't have it identified here, but I can, I can try and figure out where it is back at the office. Uh, other comments that I'm reading from that site visit. Uh, we discussed resurfing, resurfacing the lower parking area also to catch basins that flow into through the building. So um, Mr. Aguia has uh, requested the um, system be uh, scoped, inspected. Uh, so that's going to include that uh, sluice way that goes through the building and then leaves the building and goes somewhere, Mr. It's, Ferry? <laughs> it's presumed that the infrastructure that I'm referring to leads to the sluice way. So that'll be identified when the camera and the scoping is done. Okay, and, and does that go all the way out to Wana Boulevard or wherever it ends, Mr. Ferry? Okay. Do you have any questions on that as far as, we're talking the whole system. Yeah, um, as I've said, it shouldn't affect the overall design since we're currently mitigating the, the water flow that's running to those two inlet units. But um, like I said, we can, we can make sure that gets arranged and, and have those scope. Okay, are these the latest plans? Because the reference here says that um, Mr. Barry stated, he will submit a revised plan set as the original plans were hard to read. Is, are these the original plans or is this a revision? Uh, this is a revision. Okay. Uh, Everyone should have this. I, I brought it about. What's the date of those plans, please? 
um, a fifth. So that a copy was sent to uh, Mr. Pilling, I assume. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Ferry, do you need a copy of those plans? Yes. So, Mr. Ferry, Highway Department, and certainly Mr. Aguiar Building. Um, do you need anything, Mrs. Caldonia, other than what's already going to be present? Right. Well, see how you're waiting for additional items, and the plan might change, and things like that. Mm -hmm. It might make sense instead of coming back tomorrow night. Um, just wait. Yeah. Is there an open or a continued hearing at the CONCOM level? Yes, you have to request a continuance. Mm -hmm. You can send uh, there's a form I can forward to you, Sean. Okay. Yeah, if you could if you could please do that. Yeah, no problem. I'll do it right now. Okay. Okay. Uh continue, please. This is essentially my, my presentation. Okay, uh, does anyone on Zoom have any questions, uh, Mr. Mullen? Mr. Mullen's on, he's here and he's not here. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from the commission of the committee? Mr. Ferry. Main Garden, Southeast. You know, we want to go by the entrance. See overflow. So we have a small overflow uh, going towards the the other parking area at the moment. Is, is that a pipe or is that? It, it's it's like riprap essentially. Okay. Um, in all the storms, it it doesn't really get overwhelmed until hundred year. So, I like I like the way Brad gives. Now, does that cross the sluice? It goes to the sluice. Yeah, it goes to it. Yes. So, just to clarify, the drainage system eventually goes into the plant into that sluice way. Ah, uh, this one does. That one does. Correct. And that sluice way flows out to. A rain garden or to the drainage system? That sluice way goes under Warner Boulevard and, and flows to the river, from my understanding. Right. There's, there's two bridges on Warner Boulevard. The first one is that sluice way. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So the cleaning of the water that comes from the sluice way goes through the rain garden and into uh, goes right to the river the rain garden is just the surface water the other structures on the lower part where he's going to entertain paving that's why he indicated he wants to change those structures so the water will be treated okay so all the water will be treated before it goes to three mile exactly okay uh any other questions mr ag yeah no thank you i'm just curious I know old mills have sluice ways. Is reason, maybe it's money that rather than just making a drainage system that runs outside the plant, mm -hmm. it's is it not practical to do it? I mean, I, if you read this, Mr. Chairman, yes, if you redesigned the drainage in this complex, it would exceed the value of the building. Oh my it's goodness! That complex. <laughs> I thought money might be involved. Okay. Okay. I understand. Um, any other questions relative to uh, this topic? No. Nope, Anything to go to help? No. Okay. Um, then obviously we need to continue this because you've got a few more meetings with, uh, at least with CONCOM, at least another one. Uh, I will entertain a motion to continue. So move.
but receive it, email me. Okay. I don't know something. Okay. I, I did just get it. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion to continue this to the next regular meeting. Is there a second? Uh, any discussion? The next regular meeting of the Stormwater Committee is Wednesday, June 15th at 1 p.m. Um, Mr. Barry, is 1.30 a uh, convenient time to, to open the hearing again, uh, to continue it? Absolutely. Any discussions? Hearing none, I'll call a vote to continue. Mrs. Batavia. Hi. Stag, yes. Hi. Mr. Ferry. Hi. Uh-oh. That was a thought about vote. <laughs> Mrs. East today. And Mrs. Gulati. Uh, I won't even ask because I think I know. So, Mr. Barry, if Mr. Ferry has any questions, comments, opinions, or anything else, rest assured you'll hear about them before that meeting. Sounds good. I'll get you to uh, revise the plans. So. Okay, moving on on the agenda. Agenda item 5E update site visits off County Street Railroad bed. Um, I don't think we have anything new on that. Uh, we made the site visits to a property, uh, two properties that front on Pleasant Street, one of which also has frontage on County Street. Um, as I said, when we were talking about Agenda 5A, uh, we will set up a site visit for that property uh, when Mrs. Grassy returns and we all, um, be on an appropriate time, date. Um, so for 5E, I don't think there's anything new to report. Um, Mrs. Caldonia told us she had just had had a conversation with the attorney representing one property owner, and we heard about the DEP visit. So uh, I don't think we have anything here to cover. Um, this will continue for updates on future agendas like so many of these items do. Uh, moving on to agenda 5F, Review, Discuss, Act, 2040 County Street. Is there anything new on this one? Oh, I understand. Uh, it's the... It's, it's now, whether it's this old song, right? Yes. There's a trucking business or something. Yes. Okay. okay. So speak up. Okay. Uh, flagging. Oh, okay. It's, Stuff is growing, it's not yeah. Conservation Commission should have something for me. Okay, so this will be on the agenda for uh, June. Um, so the flagging has begun and, and you expect it to be completed today and uh, the uh, we'll have the update as we have been doing each month. Yeah, we still don't know, you know, exactly what they're planning for the property, but until once they have the wetlands line established and reviewed by the commission, if necessary, then we'll at least so the next step is after flagging is to do the restoration plan and submit it to CONCOM? 
Uh, yes, if there's restoration that's necessary, yeah. Okay. Do we have any questions or anything else about this agenda item? Hearing none. Um, for the time being, I would like to skip over 5G. Uh, and when Mrs. Grassy returns, uh, I'll ask her to contact members to see what, if we can come up with a date. This is the agenda item, schedule workshop for bylaw and regulation review. Um, as I said before, this is not intended to go, uh, it's too late anyhow, this is not planned for the upcoming town meeting because the amount of work that's gonna have to be done and the public meeting or, and or public hearing that may be required. So um, if there's no objection, we'll add this to the list for when Mrs. Grassy returns. Um, on this next item, uh, I had reported and asked the committee at uh, a previous meeting uh, about possibility of um, doing another giveaway this uh, around the time of lights on uh, because the calendars were very well received by the public. Um, this is uh, Rassi did get a price quote and at the, we had a very brief meeting when we were out at Brook Street. And at that meeting, um, the committee voted to authorize Mrs. Uh, grassy to order the calendars because if we ordered them by a certain date uh, we would have the lower price locked in so um, the what we actually voted on at that meeting was we did we did order and receive the educational materials for children, uh, which I call the Dighton Discs because we can't call them Frisbees because that name is patented. So those are in. They're going to be available at uh, some of the summer events, um, cow chip, uh, firecracker, uh, assuming that we don't have a big rainstorm and everything else that ruins things. So. Um, I need to know uh, how the committee feels about ordering the calendars um, to be given away at probably lights on. Uh, if uh, we notify the vendor that the committee wants to get them, again, the price will be held uh, after the, I think it's after the beginning of or the middle of July, the prices are gonna go up again. I think the calendar last year was around a dollar and 43 cents, which is pretty cheap. And it went up slightly, but it's it's not a big price increase. So uh, is there a motion to authorize Mrs. Grassy to order 2023 calendars as part of our educational uh, program for stormwater? Yes. Is there a minimum amount that we order? Do we? 500 is what we bought last year, and I really wouldn't want to exceed that. Um, most of them were given away to the public directly, and the few that were left, um, I placed in the two post offices, and they, they disappeared very quickly. And recently, I found, I think, six others, <coughs> excuse me, and put those in the post office, and they were gone overnight, even though they were older. And there are, the, the new calendar obviously will have all new pictures. It was national parks that we got the last time. So that's what I'm looking for this time. So it would be an order of 500. Grassy to order 500 2023 calendars on behalf of the Stormwater Committee. I second that. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Mrs. Katabia? Aye. Stag, yeah. Aye. Ferry? Aye. Z today? Aye. Nancy? Aye. 
We'll have an update on that with the uh, shipping. There's always a, a shipping charge, but uh, we will um, get the order in. The, obviously, the calendars will not be coming in, but I says as long as we have them for uh, the fall event, which I'm looking right now at lights on because we have other materials that I can use for um, uh, the Lions Arts Festival. Mr. Ferry, we're going to have that this year, you think? November? Yes. It's planned? Yes. Okay. And we have other materials uh, that we'll be uh, giving out uh, to use of what we have, but um, we'll have an update on that at the next meeting. 6A project, active project updates. Uh, Update Park Avenue, Pleasant Street drainage concerns from owners. I had received an email from a resident of Park Avenue and he had seen uh, Bristol County mosquito control there, but then they left and didn't do anything and he wanted to know what was gonna happen. And my response was that uh, the property owners uh, between Park and Pleasant and they own property that it fronts also Beach Street had refused uh, admission to that property or access to the property of a Bristol County mosquito control. And the email informed the gentleman who contacted me that it is a civil matter at this point. So uh, does anybody have anything to update on that? Is any has anybody heard from anyone? I know I copied some of you just to uh, I asked you what kind of a response I needed to give. So anything on that from anybody? Nothing new. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 5B, update, Clearway Solar Project 1420 and 1522 William Street. So whoever's going to speak, if you are come up to the podium, please, any and all. Hi, good afternoon. Jason Ringler with TRC Companies. I had submitted uh, a, a restoration plan, uh, I guess it was earlier this week on Monday, and uh, I'm with TRC Companies. I'm a professional wetland scientist, certified wildlife biologist, and it's my understanding that they, um, various members of boards had a site visit last Monday and identified a few areas that were not in compliance with the issued order of conditions. I, I was asked and retained, um, in, in addition to myself, I have the owner of the project uh, in person as well as remotely with, with, uh, representing me, uh, Clearway. I have Meridian Associates as, in addition on the line, um, as well as the, the contractor, Signal. So if, you, if anyone has any questions, we're, we're here to uh, answer them and to tr try to resolve this issue and to show commitment and compliance with the issue issued order. Okay, would you state your name again? Sure, it's Jason Ringler. Spell the last name, please. R-I-N-G-L-E-R. -E and your uh, profession is? I'm a professional wetland scientist. Your company? TRC. Like Tom Robert Charles? Yes. Thank you. Um, did you see the email that was uh, sent out by Mr. Pilling outlining all of the problems that were found at the site and the violations that were identified? Yes. Okay. And the uh, understanding was that that plan would be here on Monday, which I understand it was. Correct. Um, Mr. Aguia, uh, Mr. Pilling obviously is not here today. Uh, Mr. Aguia, uh, do you have anything on this that you wish to report? I do not. I just had uh, one uh, question. I know that we just started and obviously um, we're here because some errors were made. There was extensive discussion through the stormwater process that this area would be, uh, would utilize riprap and trap rock so that 
No erosion controls are currently in place. It's a very sensitive area. And obviously now that we've increased the amount of that sort of accentuates that. So what's the timeline to get that riprap and trap rock from that area? Do you know? So I, I think assuming we can, you know, between this meeting and tomorrow night's meeting at the Conservation Commission, we can move forward. You know, the initial phase was to, you know, clear up to the approved limit of disturbance, establish the erosion control measures, and then from there move forward with the trap rock. I don't have a date, but I can I can get back to you if that's acceptable. But it's forthcoming. It's Absolutely. Okay. okay. Nothing's happened since the, the site visit last week. Thank you. Well, you're still in. Uh, he's still installing erosion controls, correct? Correct. On the rest of the site, not in. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was a little confused. Mm -hmm. as to, I think that I'm missing. That was uh, area one. Is an additional area, and it is um, east of these areas you have located here. Okay. So that's within the 100 foot regulated area. Okay. So you might want it to be down there. But it's not outside of the approved limit of disturbance, correct? I think I think the focus of the, the restoration plan. I don't know, you have to tell me. Well, it's my understanding that the concern was that there was work that was completed at the crossing adjacent to the vernal pool, which we've I try to separate these two areas. Area one, we've called them. In that particular area, because a little bit of clearing took place outside of the approved limit of disturbance, those areas were actually surveyed. That's what's shown in the plans. That area represents about 200 and I think it was 35 or so square feet. Right now I'm talking about an area that's east of these areas. Okay. That is outside of, so the erosion controls are supposed to act as your limit of disturbance. That was clear at all our meetings. We made sure Clearway understood Okay. The erosion controls were the limit of disturbance, and this area I'm speaking about is outside. It's not within the limit of disturbance. So we'll take a look at that sure. and, and survey it if necessary so that you're ready for the meeting tomorrow. That's what I'm going to ask. Tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. Well, we, we can take a look at that. Yeah. And then, you know, um, but I did, I do agree that having someone on site during the project, a wetland scientist on site is probably the best thing you guys could do to make sure, ensure that this doesn't happen again. Okay. Um, I have the draft minutes for that site visit. I'm not going to read all of it, but for public information. Uh, we, we were at the site uh, on May the 9th. Um, and this was following the actual stormwater committee meeting that took place at 10 a.m. on May the 9th. Um, I should explain something. Um, Thursday, May the 5th, the Stormwater Committee had posted a workshop meeting to work on bylaw and regulations. Late in the day on Thursday, uh, an email was received um, by me from Mr. Pilling, and it was as the result of a visit that he had made to the site. Were you with him at that time, Mrs. Caledonia, on Thursday? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, not the initial site visit. I was with you guys. I was. So when the when the violations were first reported. Uh, uh, Mr. Pilling found them. He was alone at the time? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so, at the meeting that we 
had we had to uh, so anyhow Thursday it was too late to amend the posting notice for what was going to be a workshop meeting. So first thing on Monday morning, um, I went to the town clerk's office and we amended the agenda to include a discussion of these violations that have been brought to light. Uh, again, I heard about them on late Thursday. And, and again, town hall was closed for the weekend and I couldn't get to town hall to make any changes. So, so the agenda was amended. Uh, on the morning of May the 9th, the meeting took place and at the meeting it was announced that at 11.30 a.m. on that day, May the 9th, there would be uh, a site visit um, to evaluate the situation. The note that I have here from the minute says, um, Clearway team is going out to the site today, meaning May the 9th, to evaluate the situation. Valley of Signal Energy, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, will be arriving at the site at 11.30 a.m. today to view and discuss the issue. The erosion controls have been installed incorrectly at the erosion control stakes. They want the project to continue to move forward and work with us. They is, is, retur is referring to the uh, project owner manager, um, the entire team. Uh, further on in these minutes, it says Mr. Pilling read the email he sent to Clearway on May 5th. That was the Thursday, 2022. Quote, the following items need to be resolved ASAP. One, respond to the limit of work slash erosion control question. Two, Rehang the wetland flags in this area. Three, the erosion controls will need to be relocated to the correct position. Four, a plan needs to be prepared immediately for restoring the disturbed areas outside of the allowed work, outside the allowed area of work, and the plants need to be, and the plants need to be planted this, emphasize this spring. No treating tree cutting will be allowed to commence until all of the above items are rectified. The limit of work slash erosion control staking needs to be resolved immediately as they are in the process of installing. Restoring four foot wide vegetation around the entire perimeter of the site may be problematic. So that's basically items that were discussed at the actual meeting we had, and then the site visit took place. So um, in looking at this, uh, Mr. Ringler, um, and from what Mrs. Caldonia said, um, respond to limit of work slash erosion control question. So has that been addressed in the plan that was delivered on Monday? Yes, that's correct. So the plan that was delivered Monday represents the erosion controls as they are found currently in the field and which were surveyed by Meridian Associates. Okay, and so that's gonna be presented to CONCOM tomorrow, tomorrow night. Rehang the wetland flags in the area. Has that been done? Yes, it was done via survey. The erosion controls will need to be re relocated to the correct position. Has that been done? Yes, there was a, a one or two locations where the erosion controls were interior or on top of the stake and those have been addressed as it's seen in what can be considered an as-built plan. Uh, Mrs. Caldonia, from your site visit, your most recent one, there was a lot of discussion and concern about the proximity of those erosion controls to the vernal pool. Has that uh, erosion control been sufficiently relocated so that it's not um, too close to the vernal pool? The erosion controls are right. It's the problem is that there needs to be another roll of erosion controls put in. I'm sure after our meeting and we discuss everything tomorrow night, we'll put another row in below. So you because you've got a lot of disturbance between the initial Lodge, in my opinion, a little bit overkill. 
um, wattles and then the ones below. There's no, there's no ones below in you need. Okay, uh, we're not going to discuss that particular item because it's got to go to CONCOM anyhow, but in looking at what Mr. Pilling had initially asked for, so this is something that's also going to go to CONCOM and CONCOM will discuss this and that's where you'll have your opportunity to respond to that particular one. Yeah, but if I could respond to the book book why. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of that area is outside of the regular hour authority. On con, but <laughs> servants, and it could equate to X amount of square feet additional, or you know, I mean, I think it needs to be addressed. Maybe <laughs> serving, I don't know if it needs to be serving. Um, I think, um, Mr. Ag, yeah, yeah, how, how do we determine that right now? That's just that was visual by Agent Pilling. Is that is that correct? Yeah, so well, and down. us when we oh. went on the site because you could see a lot of, and you know, I don't know if the, it sounded like the company that installed them isn't used to doing that. I would suggest we bring that up at a future meeting because if it's outside wetlands jurisdiction, it's not a concern for sedimentary runoff. So we can address that at a future meeting as to whether it's in the original approved plan. If that's the case, then we may have to include planning in the discussion. Okay. I, that's not something we can address today. So um, it has, have you had a chance to speak to Mr. Pilling about, I don't know if he's reviewed these plans yet or not? I don't know. Okay. And Mr. Aggie, have you had any conversations? Okay. Obviously, uh, we know that part of this are is going to go to CONCOM and obviously we want to know what comes out of that meeting and it would seem also <coughs> excuse me that in agreement with what uh Commissioner Aggie I just said uh when um Mr. Pilling returns and has a chance to look at uh the plans again and find out what CONCOM did um because he was at that site visit as was I he will be able to uh, report back to the stormwater committee, but also in the meantime, before we meet again, get back to your company with whatever he sees, finds, recommends, or whatever. Um, the um, discussion I remember relative to the placement of erosion controls, especially near the vernal pool, and I think it was evident that, um, similar to what Mrs. Caldonia said, Whoever installed uh, the um, socks, uh, I call them big green snakes, um, was not fully aware of what the requirements were relative to doing anything around that vernal pool and the distance from it and also the uh, no touch zone and the work zone and all of that um, because we had a lengthy discussion about lack of communication and the need for everybody on site, regardless of what their task or assignment is or what company they represent or what contractor has been brought in. Everyone has to have the same information so that uh, these kinds of errors are not repeated. So um, as Mr. Aguiar said, uh, I see this coming back to the stormwater committee after CONCOM, after Mr. Pilling, and he has a chance to talk to you and anybody else relative to this. Um, plan needs to be prepared immediately for restoring the disturbed areas. So is that what you have been working on? And is that part of what was delivered on Monday? That is correct. Okay. So again, uh, this is something that uh, CONCOM would be involved in. Yeah, but for the record, their plan is not to restore that area until the fall. No, that's not correct. Okay, can you just tell us what? Well, the, the plan, so I, I think we, we were talking, we, we have several good discussion points. First, I think you had brought up uh, communication. I'd like to just point out again, in the, the, the members in person and on the Zoom call, there's at least eight or nine of us here. So. We understand, we appreciate it, and we hear what you're saying. The second item, going back to limit of disturbance, uh, I have a colleague, Mr. Ryan, on, on via Zoom, and he can speak to it in a little bit more detail if you would like. 
But his surveyor went out and they established the approved limit of disturbance that was reviewed and approved by the Conservation Commission with total survey station. Those flags are, have been marked and staked in the field. So that, that's, you know, j just as a point of clarification. So anything outside of that limit of disturbance in particular, where we're talking about area one, the vernal pool, or area two, the restoration area, is what we were proposing to restore. Wow. The, the vernal pool oh, immediately, until immediately. as soon as as soon as we get as soon as we get concurrence from the conservation commission and this board it'll be done and that includes planting I think, i'm sorry i i i no i i think no i think i think i know what you're talking about what you're referring to is because of the steep slope, there's been some sediment that's been deposited into the vernal pool. As we all know that there, there's standing water in the vernal pool, there's amphibians in there right now. So rather, if it's underwater, we can't see it to remove it. Right. So what we're proposing to do is, to, we're proposing to hydro seed the area, we're proposing to plant the area, and then once it dries out, if that if that material is distinguishable without you know creating additional harm to the vernal pool, then it will be removed with shovels and buckets. That's what that's discussing. That's what I just read. Okay. So just to clarify, item four again, a plan needs to be prepared immediately, which has been done, for restoring the disturbed areas outside of the allowed work area and the plants need to be planted this spring. Is the vernal pool considered obviously outside of the allowed work area and the entire area that was disturbed outside of the allowed work area? Is what you're saying is that in that to hold the disturbed area, we know there's a vernal pool. It is not appropriate to do something about the pool right now because there's water in it, but it is the plan to just to restore everything else and the last thing to be addressed is the vernal pool. Is that what I'm understanding? That's correct. Uh, no, there are only two areas that will be restored. There's the area, these two areas. So area one, which is the areas around the vernal pool, Okay. At least some of them. In area two, they are not proposing to restore anything that Todd suggested the four foot wide area. Okay, all right. Area one, as we entered that area and walked up the road, the vernal pool is on the left, or I think that's the. Yes. All right. So that was all. And then we continued to another area, and there was discussion there. Okay, all right. Um, we need to move on because obviously uh, we can't make a decision because this really has got to go to CONCOM. We need to know what CONCOM is going to say. I was just asking this to get clarification that I was understanding the statements that were made. Um, and you confirm that's what I'm talking about, that there will be restoration ASAP once you get the go ahead on the disturbed area in the disturbed area is a vernal pool, and that pool will be addressed at the end of this proposed restoration because there's water in it right now. Correct. So okay. All, all areas that are shown in green will be hydro seeded. That associated with area one will be there. There will be shrub and, and sapling plantings planted as discussed. Okay. And we can't, you know, we can't remove sediment if, if we can't see it. Correct. And the other thing was, um, when we were out there, it was, uh, there was reference made to what kind, a list or something of what kind of vegetation, saplings or whatever are going to be planted. Is that part of the plan also? It's in both the letter and it's in the plan form. Okay, fine. All right. So again, that's going to CONCOM. Uh, so um, relative to the uh, Email from Mr. Pilling that basically ceased operation out there until all of these items were addressed. Does uh, anyone here have questions or wish to comment on anything else relative to this? 
this will be coming up on our agenda again at the next meeting uh, because then we'll have information. Obviously, in the meantime, the CONCOM will uh, act and Mr. Pilling will be involved in this. And uh, if no one has anything, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Do you have anything else? Yes. So just as a point of clarification, as far as schedule goes, so, we, you know, we wanted to make the presentation here. Obviously, we'll make it again tomorrow evening. We can we can discuss the area. I think you said a little bit further to the east in the 100 foot buffer. Yeah. We can discuss that as well. But as far as uh, progression, work progression, so is the plan acceptable that was submitted Monday? Well, I can't make that decision. My conservation commission would make the decision, but okay. I don't know what's doing. Well, I, this committee is not going to act on this today, obviously, because it can't. So the next step is obviously CONCOM. You're going to go to them. When Mr. Pilling returns, He's going to be in communication with Mrs. Caldonia and find out what happened uh, as the stormwater agent. Uh, if he is satisfied with what the plan is and, and concurs with CONCOM, he will let you know. By the same token, if either CONCOM and or Mr. Pilling say, nope, you got to take care of this. So that's what's going to happen. CONCOM and Mr. Pilling. All that's, right. That's fine. But again, we, we won't have to wait until we, this will be a, an open dialogue, correct? We, we don't have to wait until June 15th, you said, to. Oh, no, Stormwater Committee will, we will, this will be on the agenda. It'll, as a matter of fact, as long as this is an active project, it'll be on every month, whether we have something or not. Um, no, it'll be the action of the CONCOM and Mr. Pilling that will give you information about go ahead or you got to change this, you got to do that. Right now, nothing can happen up there because you've got to go to CONCOM and obviously Mr. Stilling wants to make sure everything has been addressed on his list. And, has, and he, so what you're saying is he hasn't had an opportunity to review it. No, I'm not saying that. The plan was delivered to him. It's got to go to CONCOM next. He would, I, I do not believe that Mr. Pilling, if he was sitting here today, would say, go ahead, everything's okay, because he wants to know what's going to happen uh, on the CONCOM end. Uh, because as the stormwater agent, obviously, he does work closely with the conservation agent. Um, so uh, it's going to be a, uh, I'll call it a mutual decision by CONCOM and Mr. Pilling. But no, you don't have to wait for this committee to meet next month. You will have an answer before then. Great. We appreciate that. And again, you know, we're, we're if there's any other questions, obviously, our, our team is available and, you know, we're going to facilitate the communication. I think everybody has my my name, my email, my phone number. If there's any questions about the restorative plantings or the hydro seeding, you know, please don't hesitate to. Okay, reply. from from a stormwater perspective, I will say that you can expect to hear from Mrs. Caldonia and Mr. Pilling. I don't see members of this committee contacting you directly because if somebody thinks of something that we aren't discussing today. Uh, they can ask Mr. Pilling and he can look into it. And uh, the intent is to get this uh, restored and corrected and uh, done uh, as soon as practicable, uh, as long as uh, CONCOM and Mr. Pilling are in agreement. Um, we don't want to hold up the project, but by the same token, uh, you can tell by the tone of the email that went out, uh, everything was brought to a screeching halt. Uh, it was considered that the violations were serious enough uh, to first of all, I would not normally have changed a workshop meeting to an active meeting, but my only other option was to declare an emergency meeting under the open meeting law, and I really felt that it was not necessary to declare an emergency because we had a workshop posted. As it turned out, we did not uh, take up the rest of the agenda, which was to work on the bylaw and regulations because uh, Mr. Pilling and I went out to the site visit and um, we were, there were two members missing and we felt that, that that workshop work that we have to do is important enough. We would like to have the, <coughs> so um, I cannot stress enough the urgency of the situation when I was notified Thursday night after town hall was closed, I couldn't get to town hall uh, to get uh, a change in the agenda posted, an amendment, whatever you wanna call it, had that not, had I not had a workshop posted for Monday, I would have been talking to the town administrator saying, I think I got to declare an emergency because 
Mr. Pilling has made it clear what he wants and how quickly he wants it. And uh, I would have to do a 48 hour posting notice to get an emergency meeting. And to me, an emergency meeting is truly, truly an emergency. This is, was significant, it was very important. Uh, but again, I made the decision to go with the workshop meeting because it had already been posted. So uh, that's not a normal practice. And um, I don't know if there'll be consequences under the open meeting law uh, for that or not. Um, but in any case, uh, this was, uh, or these are very serious concerns. And uh, I know you said about the number of people that have been involved with communications, but I will state this again. It was very clear to me in being out at that site visit that when we had the pre-construction meeting at Arujo's uh, farm, um, you had many staff members and employees and we met all the people and what their job titles were and what their responsibilities were. It gave us a really good feeling of confidence about this project moving forward. When these violations were brought to our attention and we were out at the site visit, and I will add that there was another member of the CONCOM president, Mr. Digits, who is actually, uh, again, a member of the CONCOM. Um, it was clear that the communication that I felt was assured to us at the pre-construction meeting had not been carried out because whoever uh, placed the, the uh, socks, the silt socks or the green snakes, whatever you want to call them, and the fact that the vernal pool had been violated and the fact that there was, there was work done in areas that should not have been worked in, the communication was not carried out to whatever level was needed. And I stated at that meeting, Anyone involved with a project, no matter what they do, must get the same message. For example, if you have a delivery scheduled, the town uh, bylaw says not before 7 a.m. and not after 7 p.m. We've had cases of people showing up too early or too late, which is a clear violation. In those cases, the delivery people were, were advised, you do that again, you're gone. By the same token, um, there are people that belong uh, work for whether it's construction companies or whatever who obviously didn't get the message it's fine for everybody that has a a supervisory or i'm in charge of this and i'm in charge of that that's fine if they get the message but if their their area of of control expertise or whatever you want to call it if they don't communicate whatever to the people who are doing the work for them then there isn't communication. And I stress that. And um, again, I don't want to have to keep repeating this. If everyone involved doesn't understand and says, nobody told me when we were talking about plants to be planted or a list of them or how are they going to be saplings or whatever. Uh, there were two gentlemen at the site. Um, one made a remark about you want us to point you want us to plant the poison ivy. Well, Un unnecessary. All I'm saying is I communication is only as good as as far as it goes. And I will say again, everyone has to get the message that it relates to whatever services they're going to provide or whatever position they hold. So um, I appreciate that. I think we beat that to I thought we did to a dead horse. But I just mentioned that again. Um, miscommunication is it's not an accepted excuse. I'm sorry. It's just not. Um, we're not going to have any repeats of some difficulties we have run into in other places. So it's out there. Uh, second time I've said this, but I'm just making it clear to everybody. Um, don't want to hear from anybody. Nobody told me. Not the town's problem. We will work uh, tirelessly with your company and all the companies involved. But that excuse is not acceptable from anyone. Understood. I appreciate everyone's time. And again, I, I think hopefully you recognize the additional commitment that, uh, you know, the conservation had brought up earlier where 
you know, in addition to, uh, you know, what was previously proposed and complying with the, the orders of condition, you know, the owner of the project is going to have an environmental monitor go out there that's going to be reporting directly to the Conservation Commission. So I appreciate that. That's fine. Thank you. I appreciate that. So this will be on the agenda for the June meeting, uh, which, as I said, is June the 15th at 1 p.m. in this building. But you will hear from uh, Mrs. Caldonia uh, because of CONCOM. And you're going to be at the meeting tomorrow night, I assume. Yes. And uh, you'll hear from Mr. Pilling. And Mr. Pilling will speak relative to, um, I'll say any concerns he has relative to his position as stormwater agent, okay? Great. All right, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you everybody from Clearway and everyone connected to the uh, project at the, uh, uh, the two projects at the Arujo Farms. Thank you, Ms. Goulart. Thank you, Lisa and, and everybody else in the room. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, next item is Agenda 6C. I just want to make it clear. I'm I know you have to leave. But I'm zooming in. OK. Thank you. See. Drive safely. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. I will. Not the I Zoom have, meeting. I have to OK, all right. Great. Hands free. OK. Agenda item 6C, Brook Street Solar Project. Uh, who wishes to address this? So this is Nick Fasendola from Level Design Group here on the Zoom call. Okay, Nick, you're on. So um, I've been in uh, recent uh, discussions with Todd regarding the stormwater basin and some uh, possible repair options. Um, and have gone over some design, preliminary designs with him on how to work that basin in to essentially fix the issue and not have a large amount of disturbance at the site. Um, you know, you, the committee was on site when we did those test pits uh, in the basins. You guys all saw the material, the unsuitable material that was placed. Um, in in that basin number one, uh, we've also uh, Nick. Excuse yes. me. No, Mr. Pilling observed the test. the The site visit for the rest of us was over where the battery storage units were. I did not see what was in the bottom of that basin. Uh, Mr. Pilling came over before uh, a sort of as we were wrapping up the site visit to discuss the battery units. So. I'm not aware that um, any members of the committee that was out for the site visit saw the contents from the basin. Did anybody, Mr. Agia? I, I just went by just to see the digging, and I am a licensed soil evaluator because so I was looking at more than just turret. I knew what I was looking at. Okay, all right. So just just correction, it would have been Mr. Uh, Pilling and Mr. Aguiar, who had seen it, not the committee. So uh, continue on, please, Mr. Fasendola. My apologies. Uh, so I'll um, give the committee a, a brief description of what was encountered in that basin. Um, so there was uh, a substantial amount of unsuitable fill material um, in the bottom of the basin. Looks like the contractor had mined out native material within the basin floor and had used that material in my estimation would to construct the berm for basin one and instead of <laughs> replacing that material with uh, proper material which would have been a, a title five sand uh, they elected to fill their over excavated area with a combination of uh, looked like topsoil and stump grindings, which is uh, very um, unacceptable in that type of situation. Over excavating the bottom of an infiltration basin is unacceptable to begin with, but you know it does have to be done in certain areas if you have to remove, say, um, topsoil or A or B horizon material to get to the naturally pervious material within the basin. 
And, uh, you know, our plan did have a note on there that any over excavated areas were to be filled with sand to the bottom of the basin elevation. So that was not done correctly. Both Todd and myself were not called to the site to uh, inspect the um, bottom of the basins. So, um, you know, when we dug the test pits, uh, we encountered that situation and uh, then went back to the contractor and you know demanded clarification on what was done at the site and what the extent of the filled or unsuitable material is on site. Um, there's a decent amount of that material in the bottom of the basin and I've been discussing with Todd some options to modify the design of that basin to essentially be a detention pond versus an infiltration basin and provide an out um, one overflow excuse me one outlet pipe and provide a sub drain <clears throat> at the bottom of the basin so it does not fill with water because it cannot drain properly due to the unsuitable material which was placed. Unfortunately, Todd's not available today uh, to discuss the preliminary designs I had sent over to him to review. I wanted to work out some of these items with Todd prior to making a formal submission to your committee. That's part of this, because I did have a conversation with Mr. Pilling yesterday. Um, I got a question for you first. I'm visualizing this basin being excavated when it was initially excavated to build the basin. Okay. You said something about, I think you were saying that they dug too deep. They should have only dug deep enough to get to the uh, soil that would infiltrate, allow water to infiltrate, but they went deeper. And then did they fill it in with stump grindings to bring it up? Is that what you said? Are you there, Mr. Fassendola? I apologize, but it looks like the sound has cut out, Ms. Goulard. I didn't hear that comment. I believe you're muted from what I can see. Can you hear me now? I believe I can hear you now. Okay, so um, you had ended your, your statement with you hadn't had a chance to talk to Mr. Pilling and I said that I could comment because I have had a conversation with him yesterday about this. But before I get into that, I'm trying to understand what you said. So correct me if I'm wrong. When the original um, digging was done to construct that large basin, it was dug too deep. The digging should have stopped when they hit, when they hit soil that would allow water to infiltrate through. But they went deeper, so they filled it in with some stuff. Yes. Stuff grindings. That's correct. So. What the contractor did, which they weren't advised to do, they took it upon themselves to do this, is that they mined material from the bottom of the infiltration basin, more closer on the, the side where the constructed berm is near the driveway for the material to construct that berm. 
which is completely unacceptable. I mean, you shouldn't be mining material out of the floor of an infiltration basin. And then okay. they chose to fill the, the area they had mined out with completely unsuitable material. Okay, that's what I thought you told me. So I'll get back now because we're going to wrap this up uh, shortly, this part of this meeting. So my conversation with Mr. Pilling was um, uh, at the site visit after we finished up the actual discussion about batteries and things like that, uh, Mr. Pilling said that they, uh, in the excavating the basin, uh, the reason it didn't drain is because it had been filled with stump grindings, which are not permeable, which quite frankly, I have a real problem with the fact that we were repeatedly told and told and told that the basin had been, you know, when it overflowed, oh, it had been cleaned out and it was this, that, and the other, and it was silting up and everything else. Obviously, everybody except those talking to us, or at least publicly speaking, knew there was no way that basin was ever going to drain. The guy who did it without permission, for whatever reason, we, I mean, we just had a big discussion about co communication on another project, um, chose to do something that was totally unacceptable. And yet repeatedly when we had complaints of over uh, flooding and everything else, uh, it was silting up and everything else, we're gonna clean the silt out. Well, that's history. Now getting back to the conversation with Mr. Pilling, which some of what I just said was part of what we discussed, and you can tell by the tone of my voice, uh, disgust, I'll add disgusted to it. Um, the plan or idea, what you described to us about a pipe and about something else is not going to be accepted by the stormwater committee because first of all, it doesn't comply with the plans that were originally given to us or updated or anything else. Therefore, you're going to have to, I believe, go back to the planning board because what you're proposing is not part of what was originally planned. And quite back from my position, if I had to make a decision on this and I was the only person making the decision, I would tell you right now, go down there, clean all of that stuff out of there. And I don't care how far you have to dig to get it out, whether they dug too deep or what get it down to the point where the bottom is going to allow infiltration, put in the proper kind of soil to get it to the level it needs to be at, and just follow the original plans. To come in here now with a proposal to, I don't know, modify, repair, whatever you want to call it, and ask us to accept that, I got a real problem with pipes sticking out of infiltration basins. I can tell you that this town has issued cease and desist orders. And I was on the board at the time because we were board of select and board of health when one got issued because there had been a drainage pipe stuck out of a, I'll call it a berm for lack of a better term, to facilitate drainage. That all was changed. Now, what, Mr. Pill what I said to Mr. Pilling was, I don't see how we can act on this because what you're describing to me, Mr. Pilling, as what is being proposed, which Mr. Fassendola is what you described to this committee, I don't see this going anywhere. And I really think when uh, you have a chance to talk to Mr. Pilling, um, if you intend to pursue this design, correction, repair, whatever you want to call it, I believe it's got to go back to planning. Um, this was not part of the original plan. This was not part of the agreement. To say to us, hey, we want to repair, modify, whatever you want to call it, because our contractor, the guy who was responsible for building it, took action that was inappropriate that we never approved, send it back to him. No one approved that. You knew that was wrong and you did it anyhow. So that's where I'm coming from, and I'm going to ask for comments from the Stormwater Committee. But before I do this, I want to state publicly, one of my concerns here is also we have been notified, we were notified on site that day, 
that Grasshopper intends to take legal action against the town of Dighton. So I don't see us pursuing this further. And again, the comments I made about that basin are mine alone, if I were the one making the decision on this. Obviously, there will be town officials involved, but knowing now that there is legal action pending, uh, I am saying again, those were my remarks only. They are not reflective of action by this board or anybody else in this uh, town as an official. And um, I will now ask for comments from Stormwater Committee. Mr. Aguiar. James Aguiar, Building Commissioner. So just for everyone's edification regarding Chairman Goulart's comments about referring it back to the planning board, the substance of that is, is detailed but simple. If you are changing the stormwater infrastructure that you originally uh, submitted, designed, permitted, and now you're changing that, that has ramifications downstream. That means abutter notifications need to take place that means people have, we have to reopen the public hearing and we have to go through this whole process over again. That's not this committee's uh, want, that's just the way it works because you have now deviated from your original allowances and every abutter has a right to be heard if you change the game. To say that you came back to us with this design or fix, like Selectman Goulart, I'm sorry, Chairman Goulart says, I just, I just find it utterly ridiculous and very insulting. I understand that you're trying to get out of this as quick as you can, but if you go back to the time when we told you there was a problem with this basin months and months ago and had identified the issue then, this would all be behind us. Instead, we're just circling back and it's just wasting time. And in the interim, you're not getting interconnected to the grid. That's final. You'll have to file an injunction with the courts if you intend to have me connect it to the grid. Fix this, fix it right, and we'll put this behind us. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Do other, any other members of the committee wish to comment at this time? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Easterday is here as the uh, representative from the planning board, and I'm not gonna put her on the spot, um, but um, based on what you've heard, Mrs. Easterday, uh, will you be, uh, getting some information out to your board as far as what has been discussed here today. And obviously uh, this will be available for review by the planning board, because I think going down the road, if um, the plan is to persist with this plan, the stormwater committee will take no action at all because we really think it needs to go back to planning. Absolutely. So the, if I recall, I don't have the findings and decisions in front of me. Um, you'll have to forgive me, I should have brought it, but it's my understanding when they did the motion and they did the findings and decisions, they made the motion um, or they wrote the, the decision that they would approve that retention, detention pump. Detention pond? Retention. Infiltration. It's infiltration. Infiltration. infiltration basin. Infiltration system um, on the condition that they would get the approval from the stormwater committee. But if we're changing, I mean, that, that was based upon what was originally presented. And now we're changing the whole scope of the system. And if the stormwater committee is coming back saying they're not comfortable with that and they're going to refer it back to the planning board, well, then I think that's your answer right there is that they're going to have to come back to the planning board and have another public hearing. Uh, the, um, uh, what I said to Mr. Pilling when I saw him um, uh, and discussed this last night was, um, uh, we'll find out exactly what it is they're talking about. That's why I asked for clarification of what I thought you were saying, which is what you confirmed. Um, and I said, I don't see any, if they are going to pursue this redesign, again, whatever you want to call it, uh, I see that there is no action for the stormwater committee um, simply because what was originally approved across the board by everybody that had to have a say in this has been changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly agree with uh, Commissioner Aguia to, to bring this back with a 
Mickey Mouse solution? We all know the problem. From day one, it didn't drain. And months, probably maybe a year or more went by with nothing but excuses. We're gonna clean out the silt and we're gonna do all this. And I remember discussions about, well, you haven't cleaned the silt out yet. There was no way ever there was going to be a cleaning of that basin by the person who constructed it or had oversight simply because he knew why it didn't drain. That has been an infiltration basin from day one. The town of Dighton prefers infiltration basins as opposed to retention or detention basins. Now, what uh, I think you're going to have to do, uh, Mr. Fassendola, is to talk to uh, uh, those who employ you and advise them that there will be no action by the Stormwater Committee based on what you presented here today. When Mr. Pilling is available, um, certainly you can get in touch with him. He will be made aware of what has occurred here today. And you can talk to him. But in all honesty, I don't see him coming back and saying, well, I think this new thing is going to work because the feeling of this committee is um, not what was agreed to across the board. Everyone that said yes in the beginning has to say yes now. And I don't see any yeses from any direction at this point. This problem was created and I'll call it, uh, I guess the term is aided and abetted by others than representatives of the town of Dighton. Obviously, if that basin had been inspected when it was being constructed, the minute the stump grindings were seen, they would have been said, whoop, you can't do that. So I think there has to be internal communication about how the problem that has been created by contractor employees, whatever you want to call them, of the company, how that's going to be addressed, this is not a town of Dighton problem. And the solution presented today doesn't fit. Mr. Egg, yeah. Yeah, Nick, I know you're, you're running dodgeball right now because you're the only one on. However, I, I want to leave you with this. This is the reason I find this so insulting. And I put way more effort into thinking about this than I should. However, it took a year for you to get to this point. That was not the Dighton, the town of Dighton. That was, that was you and your group. We're here. We now identified that they were incorrectly constructed. Instead of coming to the town and saying, we made a mistake. We know what needs to be done to put it back to the original way it was, it was proposed. Um, you came back with this, in my opinion, farce, because it's not going to go anywhere. And if, and if it does, and it gets remanded back to the other bodies, um, I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball, but chances are it's not going to be well received. What maybe should have happened is you came to this town and said, we made a mistake. We will correct the problem. We will reconstruct the basins back to their original uh, status. And in the meantime, Dighton, can we please interconnect with the grid? And to do that, we are going to put up the money in a bond that we know it's going to take in order to do this properly. Dighton may have said, you know what? We'll get a third party to give us a price. And if we can all come to agreement, we'll put a cash bond up and we'll make sure that this infrastructure gets fixed once and for all. Then you could have been disconnected. We would have gotten the stormwater stuff fixed and everyone can move on. Instead, we're spinning our wheels. And yes, you have insulted me and the town of Dighton. And I think it's ridiculous. Uh, Mr. Fassendola, my comments are not directed to you as a individual a person, an engineer, a professional person. My comments are directed to you because you are representing Grasshopper and every other name connected to that project on Brook Street, including the contractor that created the problem. And um, I know you're only the messenger, um, but uh, I, I concur with what has been said by uh, Mr. Aguiar. Uh, I don't think there's anybody sitting here that would disagree, quite frankly now that everything is out in the open. Um, and what, what we have been jerked around literally for months. And I also think back to 
when the offer was made to post a bond in whatever amount, and it was Mr. Hafez that, that um, brought this up at one of our meetings, and I said, wait a minute, you want to post a bond of we're not sure how much money to take care of a problem that we haven't identified. Think about what you said to us today. That problem was identified. That problem was known by at least the contractor. So we go through the painful agony of saying that doesn't make any sense to post a bond for an unidentified problem to rectify it. It was because Mr. Pilling was persistent in saying, we got to find out why it doesn't drain. So again, this is not directed at you, but this is being recorded and will be available. And I hope the folks at Grasshopper, wherever they're located, at least listen to this part of this meeting, because um, I will again say, this town has bent over backwards. There have been other things presented to this town related to can the uh, solar project tie into the grid thus and so. And the answer was, well, yeah, if you do this, the battery issue, set that aside, deal with getting the project up and running. We'll talk batteries later. Oh, no, we got to get this resolved. No, we didn't. And the other thing, too, is post a bond to cover an unidentified problem. I thought of that when Mr. Aguiar was talking. Kind of brings me back to where that meeting was and thinking about what we're discussing here today. Quite frankly, um, I'm ready to entertain a motion that we continue this discussion at a future date and um, end this now. I, I, We've spent enough time talking about something that is not acceptable, that is uh, an insult to the town of Dighton and its agents and the people who live here. It has cost us innumerable hours of work. And it, it's like, it's not, the problem was known, what? <laughs> the first time we got a heavy rain, uh, does any member of the uh, committee wish to comment? Or oh, Mr. Mullen, if you're on uh, and would like to speak on behalf of the town and your position as town administrator, committee first, does anybody have anything else? Hearing Mr. Mullen? Um, uh, Mr. Mullen, if you are tied up at the present time by a catching part of this, when you're available, please feel free to come back on. Uh, I will accept comments from you if you wish to comment. But at this point in time, I see us moving on to the next agenda item. I'll be with you in just a moment. Uh, Nick, we do have uh, somebody here from the public, uh, and I'm going to call on her. Uh, but then this is not going to be a long discussion. Um, uh, this is, uh, if you would like to come up to the, the podium, Mrs. Beausoleil. And I'm going to limit your comments or questions to three minutes because this is going to end as far as this meeting goes. It's going to end now. Uh, after you finish, we're going to move on to the next. We still got a lot of agenda items to cover. So, Mrs. Beausoleil. Yes, um, Loring Beausoleil, 1680 Pine Street. As we stated from the beginning, our concern was this water building up and being a mosquito haven. With this not being fixed, it's still going to be a mosquito haven. So is there any, um, anything that they can do to pump it out when it's not draining properly as it doesn't? Whether they have somebody go and, and pump it out after the three days, the 72 hours they said it would be draining. Mr. Fasendola, is there any plan to, uh, I'll call it dewater this basin until there's a solution to how it's gonna be permanently fixed so that we don't have water laying there? At this moment in time, there's no plan in place. I will notify the project owner uh, about the concerns and we will um, put, the, put a plan together to, to address that. But I believe 
the work will, based on these conversations, we I'll notify the project owner and contractor that um, they should begin work to remediate the basin and, and reconstruct it per the approved plan as uh, it doesn't appear that any modifications to the basin as proposed um, would be entertained by both the committee or the planning board. So I will, uh, we'll get a plan in place and reach out to Todd uh, with regards to what we'll be doing on site. Okay, it's imp obviously important that Mr. Hafez and um, Mr. Prasad are aware of what has taken place here today. It's fine to notify the people on site, but I want the people that this town has dealt with at the upper level of Grasshopper to understand where we're coming from. And absolutely, definitely, there has to be some kind of a plan to address maintenance of the, the basin, meaning maintenance of not allowing water to accumulate until this whole thing gets resolved. Mr. Aguiar. motions, I'd like to make two. Wait, wait, uh, Mr. Fassendola, did you get what I said? I did, yes. Thank you. Mr. Aguiar. I'd like to make a motion that the storm inform the planning board and the building commissioner that the stormwater basin sought to be dewatered as a rain event. I second that. All right, so the plan inform the planning board and my office and building commissioner. So um, I will prepare a letter that the to the planning board and the building commissioner stating that, um, uh, and, and, I'll, and when this is voted, obviously I'll reference the vote that uh, each time there's a rain event, uh, we expect that basin to be dewatered. Uh, is it only one basin, the big one we're talking <clears throat> about? There's two. Both of them retain water. And so that both, basins be dewatered each time there is a rain event until there is a permanent solution. Right. Second. Uh, Barbara Katabia, second. This is Katabia. Um, discussion? Hearing none, uh, uh, call a vote on the motion, which is the notification to the planning board and Mr. Aguiar relative to dewatering the two basins on site until there's a permanent solution. All in favor, Mrs. Katabia. Aye. Mr. Aguiar. Aye. Mr. Ferry. Aye. Mrs. Easterday and Mrs. Goulads. And uh, I, uh, Mr. Aguiar, you had another one? <laughs> you continue until the next stormwater. And as I said, that meeting is going to be June the 15th. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Mrs. Katabia, Mr. Aguiar, Aye. Mr. Ferry, Aye. Mrs. Easterday, and Mrs. Flat. It's a unanimous vote. So, Mr. Fassendola, um, I believe that. Uh, You'll be in touch with Mr. Pilling. I will send him an email summarizing the discussion that took place here. And we'll wait to hear back from uh, Mr. Pilling, who will be talking to you. Mrs. Beausoleil, did you have anything else? No. Okay. All right, we're all set. So this will be on the agenda for the um, next Stormwater Committee meeting. Um, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Welcome. Uh, agenda item 6D, Main Street Water Main Replacement. Anything on that, Mr. Ferry? I have nothing. Okay, it'll be on the agenda for an update the next time. Uh, Winthrop Street, oh, this is 6E, Winthrop Street Rest Area Catch Basin. Anything on that? No. All right, that'll be on the next agenda. DG, uh, Agenda item 6F, DG Dighton Solar Project Phase 1 and 2 on Elm Street. Yep, we have received the as -built. 
the one who's actually going to vet the as built. So I uh, received as built and they're being reviewed. Yes. Okay, so this will be on the agenda for the next uh, meeting. Uh, finally get this off the agenda. Uh, okay, that works. Um, 6G, Forest Hills Housing. Um, which project are you here for? Yeah, um, we, we just wanted to discuss Mont Street Solar. Okay. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute because it's not on the agenda. Um, okay, Forest Hills, I can tell you that um, Monday night of this week, I attended the Town Conservation Commission meeting. It was on the agenda for them. Uh, their attorney gave a brief summary and asked that the project, uh, that the hearing be continued with the Town Concom until their regular meeting in August. Uh, Mr. Turner, the chairman, uh, commented that this project has been around for a long time, been on many agendas, and um, if they are not going to be ready by August, the Titan Concom wants to know ahead of time because it likes to plan its agenda because it's always a very long and busy agenda. Um, I did speak and said that the uh, before the vote was taken, that the town of Dayton did support an extension to August that the um, majority of town officials who would be involved in looking at this project had not seen the plans. Um, that I believe plans came in to Mr. Pilling, but I hadn't had a chance to discuss them. That um, the Stormwater Committee has taken no action again because we're waiting for uh, plan review and recommendations. Um, I mentioned that it was scheduled for the planning board tonight and for the CONCOM tomorrow night. And he said that they were going to ask for a continuance. So there won't be a Forest Hills discussion or anything tonight. Um, the um, beta group who was doing the review for the CONCOM has issued a report with recommendations and that's gonna be presented tomorrow night. Um, I've scanned it quickly, but I'm not gonna get into it since it's not something we asked for. Once it's made public through the uh, CONCOM, um, it'll be public for everybody. And Mr. Pilling has the report and the recommendations. So that's where we are with Forest Hills. Um, the, uh, my interpretation of what happened in Taunton was, and the feeling of the chairman of the committee was that, um, the best thing to do is, uh, for Forest Hills to do is to get this resolved with the town of Dighton, since the project is in the town of Dighton. And once that's all resolved to Dighton satisfaction, uh, going to the Taunton Concom should be easy. Um, and, and I certainly agree with that. Uh, Mr. Turner thanked me for coming in. The, that's, after that was when their attorney spoke to me and told me about going for continuances. So uh, this will be on a future agenda uh, and it'll depend on what Mr. Pilling uh, can tell us or recommend or comment on the plans and also then the information from the beta group uh, that has been prepared for CONCOM will be available. Uh, I'm sure you'll have it before then. Um, but that's where we are with Forest Hills. Uh, agenda item 6H, Hunters Hill. Does anybody know anything about that? <laughs> Nothing on that? I think we're waiting for plans on that one too. Okay. Uh, I do have some information if you can hear me. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi, so um, con just where we're at with conservation, um, we have tabled the actual development itself. The development project, which was filed to a notice of intent, has been tabled um, to July. And the um, applicant has gotten approval for the wetland delineation. So that just means that we agree with the delineation itself so that they can start uh, planning their, the rest of the development. Um, we are waiting for some studies to be done on some potential vernal pools and um, that's going to be part of the notice of intent filing when they actually file uh, come back with us they're going to have to uh, re-notify the abutters because it'll spend several months uh, so any abutters interested and in wondering what's going on will get notified again 
That was Hunters Hill? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, because I was, I've was i been scribbling things here between these many hills we're talking about. So, okay. Um, so again, this will be a future agenda item, Mrs. Caldonia. So we'll be looking for any additional information you may have. Uh, and what has happened with the plans or the CONCOM or anything else, okay? Great, yeah. Okay, public input. What happened was it was supposed to be on the agenda. It is not on the agenda. Therefore, we can't discuss a vote on it. However, <clears throat> uh, I will allow you roughly five minutes because I've got notes from people that have to leave and I won't have a quorum to make a brief presentation on whatever it is you would have been discussing. We were going, going to have to put this on a future agenda, but if you just want to mention what it is, again, there'll be no votes and no discussion. Thank okay? Two Thank you. So if you just state your name again for those who are tuned in. Yes. I'm here. Nick Riccio from Field Engineering on behalf of BWC Greenbrook. I have Chris Knight here as well from Blue Wave. Um, Basically, yeah, as you stated, um, it was going to be on the agenda tonight for the, uh, to consider our request for a six-month extension on the project um, to the start date and the subsequent end date of the uh, stormwater permit. Um, Mr. Aguiar was not at the previous meeting, so uh, Mr. Pilling thought it would be prudent to have him in, in, involved in the, in the vote on the extension. Uh, the reason why we came and sat through and wanted to be, you know, heard today is the start date technically on the permit was May 20th, and we had a concern about the permit lapsing because we have obviously we haven't commenced construction yet on the project, and we were hoping that the committee could either go on record, I guess, as saying if they can't make a, an actual vote today that. The permit hasn't lapsed because we haven't started construction on this. We did extend one permit. Uh, that was the was it the stormwater permit? About six months because uh, it it had actually expired technically, and we did a retro to March whatever. Uh, the permit you're talking about now is it the building permit? No, no. This is the stormwater permit. <laughs> Okay. The, the extension you're talking about would, would have expired on May 20th. And the I believe the concern was that we wanted to make sure the pilot was still in place, the building permit, you know, while we were going through the permitting. Stop right there. Pilot as in pilot agreements? Oh, the whatever with the... With no, no. Don't bring pilot agreements into this. It is not related to a start date, whether it's construction or stormwater permit or anything else. What you're talking about is an extension of the stormwater permit. Well, I'm looking to see if I've got the minutes with me for that meeting. As I remember, we had to make it retroactive to a date in March, and we extended it six months out. So if you got it there, did we send, I think we sent saying something got extended. Um, Correct. This was um, this was from November seventeenth, and it said um, the stormwater committee met on November seventeenth to discuss your request for a six month extension to start construction uh, for the uh, stormwater permits issued for nine hundred three and six, uh, Tremont and six twenty four Middle Street. The committee has granted your extension requests. The six month extension of both permits will be valid until May twentieth. Contingent on the, I'm sorry, May 20th, 2022, contingent on the selectman granting an extension of the notice to interconnect date in the pilot agreement to December 31st, 2023. Okay, so, um, and the board of selectmen did allow that, so it brings you up to the May 20th date. But I know that this committee it voted to extend, because we did it, uh, it was six months, and I know there was a retroactive, and I'm, I'm just looking. I, the motion I made was retro, retroactively for the same reasons that you're coming to us today, given a lapse before our next meeting. So the only thing I will say to the committee, or share with the committee, um, and I think it has some relevance, is the power company has installed all of the infrastructure. 
build at least one or two poles on the site itself. So there has been some activity. Um, it still it still warrants uh, an extension by this by this uh, the stormwater committee. However, there has been some activity. It hasn't just been completely stagnated since our last extension. Okay, I have the minutes of April twentieth. Um, Okay, uh, do, 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 permit extension requests, Greenbrook, Middle Street, Tremont Street. Uh, Chris Knight with Blue Wave Sola stated, the last stormwater permit extension approval was pending pilot agreement extension by the Board of Selectmen. That extension request was granted through December, 2023. Mr. Knight explained the plan has been revised. The planning board approved the minor modification January, 2022. Mr. Riccio explained there is a new plan that was submitted to the Planning Board and Conservation Commission that shows a change in the turnarounds, but the stormwater plan is the same. Mr. Knight gave a general project update. He stated the leases are finalized. They are waiting for pre-approval of qualifications. They received eligibility for the SMART plan March 8, 2022. Uh, March 7, 2022, assessing 61A renewal notices, Ms. Racine, request for proposal, a contractor to do site work. Um, the town, I know that the town has uh, waived its right of first refusal to buy the land, so all of that's done. Um, Stormwater agent Todd Pilling reminded the applicant that at the last extension request, it was noted that it would be the last extension granted. The changes that have been made to the plan do not affect stormwater. Uh, uh, this is where it was moved to be on the next meeting, which it didn't make it here. So um, again, we can't vote and really can't get into a discussion on this. Uh, when uh, Did you wanna speak? Um, when Mr. Pilling uh, returns, uh, we, this is gonna have to be uh, brought to his attention. I would say get in touch with him. Uh, I believe he's gonna be in the office tomorrow um, and go from there. Um, I'm gonna put it in for the next um, meeting. But in the meantime, uh, I would say talk to Mr. Pilling uh, because that's what's in the minutes. And quite frankly, if we had a quorum here without him present, I would be hesitant to um, go beyond what he stated. For him to say it'll be the last extension, he must have reasons. I don't know what they are, but in any case, that's where that's where we are with this right now. So we can't act today, and I would say get in touch with Mr. Pilling tomorrow. I don't think it would be appropriate, considering Agent Pilling is present today. If we were on our next budget, I'm uh, sorry, meeting, regular meeting, the retroactive, um, you know, like we did the last time. Yeah, I think it would be appropriate. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I guess we go to the next meeting, but you had just you had, um, comments about the polls being done and would that conceivably be considered the start of work out? Could your stormwater permit um, has an expiry based on the issuance of a building permit? You haven't obtained that yet. So. I'm merely making the statement that some work has been done there. It hasn't been a stagnant project. However, um, you still need to extend this permit. Oh no, that we we understand that. But in the interim, has will the permit lapse on May twentieth? If we don't retroactively extend it at our next meeting, the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. It 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 appears it's going to lapse again. You need to talk to Mr. Pilling. Um, but to not belabor the point, no. the last permit also lapsed and we did retroactive. So okay. um, once we understand what Mr. Pilling's comments and that statement that's in these minutes, what's behind that? Is, is there new information that he might change and say, well, I've got this and now I feel that we need a recommendation from him, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, I'm just making it clear that we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. no. I'm sorry it didn't make the agenda. Um, obviously, it's in the minutes that it would be, but um, 
that's why we offered you the opportunity to at least come in and make a statement um, or ask questions or get information onto public input. Well, we appreciate the chance to, to, to discuss it and we will definitely reach out to Todd uh, as soon as he gets back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Does the committee have anything else? Uh, hearing none, uh, that was public input. Uh, do we have any correspondence? Did. What do you have? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so there's a letter here from the United States Environmental Protection Agency uh, regarding the 2016 Massachusetts Small Municipal Separate Stormwater System General Permit Administratively Continued Permit Coverage from Lynn Jennings, who is the Chief Water Permits Branch. You're receiving this letter because stormwater discharges from your municipal your municipal separate stormwater system, MS4, are currently authorized under 2016 Massachusetts Small MS4 permit, which will expire on July 1st, 2022. In accordance with part 1.6 of the MAMS4 permit, the MAMS4 permit will be administratively continued on July 1st, 2022. The MAMS-4 permit will remain in full force and effect for discharges that were authorized prior to July 1st, 2022, until such discharges are authorized under a reissued general permit, an individual permit, or other alternative general permit. No action is required at this time to remain covered under the MAMS-4 permit. Yeah, that was an attachment to an email that I got from Newton Tedder. And I don't know if it was sent out to the committee, but basically, basically it's saying, plan to do your MS4 until we tell you there's a change in whatever. So it's the same notice of intent. It's uh, we're on target to meet the deadline, which is June 30th for wrapping it up. Um, Mr. A uh, A I no, not Mr. Aggie yeah, this time. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Caledoni, can you hear us now? Hello. She yes, was I can hear you guys. Yes, yep. I just, Mrs. Caledonia had something for public input, just for the record, uh, but she couldn't, for some reason, chime in before. Do you want to take real quick? Um, yep, just it's fine. I'm pulling over. <laughs> Okay. Okay. While you're pulling over, I'm going to finish uh, the comment on the email from Newton Tedder. Um, okay. So, uh, as I said, we're on schedule. No changes. Keep doing what you're doing as far as the requirements for the MS4 reporting. Um, Mr. Ferry, have we gotten anything from the Aggie School yet? Do you know if they've done their cleaning or it's scheduled? No to both. Correct. Okay. All right. But that's on your list, right? Thank you, Mr. Ferry. Are you safely stopped, Mrs. Yeah, Caldonia? I am. All right. So I got a note from um, Mr. Bob Rimmer over at 2050 Horton Street, um, and I called him on this. Um, so he, he said, Lisa, I wanted to know if any blasting has been going on. I have a 900-foot well, and we keep getting sediment in my drinking water. I have the water checked, and they say it's still drinkable. Our sinks and, our sinks and toilets have sediment. We clean it every day, and it looks just to be just bad the next day. Um, if anybody wants to see it, I'd be happy to show them. And I said, I'm not really sure if there's any blasting done in town or not um, being go going on in town. And um, and then he said, you know, I'm not really sure if it has something to do with blasting going on in Taunt. And I said, eh, it very well could be. Um, so I just asked him to come to the meeting. He couldn't make the meeting. He asked me to read that out loud for the record. What's the number Horton Street again? 2050. I'm sorry, say the numbers. 2050. Yeah. What's the check? 2460. No, 2050. 2050. Um, Correct. Is this, is this a new site or is this one we've been discussing? You're trying to find. 
No, he's he's lived on the property for about fourteen years, but he's receiving sediment in his well, in his sinks and his toilets, and he wasn't sure if it was linked to um, any blasting in town, and I couldn't answer that. Uh, does anybody know anything about blasting in town? No, oh, where man. Uh, Mrs. Caldonia, I would suggest he contact the fire chief because if this blasting, he would be the one that would permit it. Mm. You can't blast without. I'm not aware of any blasting indicted except for the Dora project in time. Well, that's quite a ways. I mean, well, as the crow flies. Okay. All right. So uh, if you want to contact the fire chief, yeah. Okay, and then if you hear anything more, uh, just let uh, Mrs. Grassy know and we'll have an update on this. Uh, just to, if there's anything out there happening that we should be aware of or whether it's, I don't think it's anything for us to act on, but we might want to be aware of it in case anybody else raises an issue. Yep, yep, I thought it would be good to bring it to the Board of Health uh, attention as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, um, next we got a slew of minutes. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, there, um, and I don't know if you got the last one. Uh, the last set of minutes was the May 9th um, that got sent out very, very late. Um, and I'm not sure that you actually got it. Uh, but in any case, it's not on the agenda. So those, you may get that May 9th. Um, we'll put it on the agenda for the next time. Um, did everyone get the minutes for that are listed on the uh, agenda? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got the May 9th also. Did you get May 9th? Get yeah, but it's not on the agenda, so we can't okay. vote on those. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes for March 30th, April, April 20th. Those truly were posted meetings. So um, is there a motion to approve the, the special meeting on March 30th and the regular meeting on April the 20th? So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Comment. Oh, all right. So you second it? I'll second the comment, yeah. Okay. Discussion. Uh, do you have Todd's gain a and m If not, I'd like to recommend we table it. I didn't hear that. Todd already commented on minutes and reviewed them. He got them all. He didn't get back to me with anything. Oh, well, I should put it. Actually, he's seen them twice okay. because Mrs. Grassy took them and he saw them. They sent them to me. Uh, I made minor edits um, and sent them back. And minutes that were sent out for Mrs. Grassy, it was he actually did that. He sent them out under her name. Okay, so no edits for those two. No, nope, I'm doing well. Okay, I'll call the vote, Ms. Aye. Aye. Ferry. Aye. You want to abstain, or do you want? You can vote. Aye. Yes. All right, unanimous. It's a unanimous <laughs> vote. Now the other three that we have, and the reason I did them separately is, even though it says minutes, these are not minutes. These are meeting notes. So I request a motion on uh, March 30th site visit, April 5th site visit, and May 3rd site visit, all our meeting notes. Is there a motion? So moved. We got a motion, is there a second? No second. Discussion. Explain that meeting notes, um, as explained to me by the Attorney General's office way back when, um, 
uh, just exactly what they say. And they are, uh, we don't usually post site visits because we're not going to take action. It's simply get information and see what's going on and ask questions and share info, but no votes and no discussion. The reason we do this is simply because it's very important at times we have to go back and look at what happened at the site visit and who said what, as you saw me doing here today. So anyhow, that's the difference, and that's why we clarify them as meeting notes and not meeting minutes. So having explained that, and no further questions, discussion, uh, all in favor, Mrs. Katabia. Aye. Mr. Agia. Aye. Mr. Ferry. Aye. Mrs. Easterday. Aye. And uh, unanimous for me. Uh, anything else to come before the meeting? If not, a motion to adjourn is in order. I was in the pizza. <laughs> Not on the agenda. Because I was extremely. I know I should have talked to you about it. Uh, I, just, I just couldn't do it. Uh -huh. it's that <laughs> and my, I get to say, it happened to me too. I thought of it when I got here today, all right, quite frankly. But I did find chocolates. Ross gave, yeah. Ross gave me the envelope. It's a meeting. I didn't yeah. Yeah. By the way, these are delicious. They're really good. Special stove. Mm. Second to the motion to adjourn. I'll second. Look down the road, over, over the road now. <laughs> Favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Fay. Aye. Aye. Sorry, aye. Both unanimous. The time is 3.35. Mr. Mullen, anything else for us today before we sign off? I think he's muted. Over. Hey, come on, guys. These are I know, bought these. You know at, um, I this. bought these at Christmas. Did you see what Carrie's favorite I don't know. movie was in there? No. no. Oh, go ahead. She was trying to pick this one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Storm water fold, Jimmy? Wow. Jimmy, you like my storm water fold? Yeah,